The statement today, big boys, what are you going to do? You are Locked On Huskers, your daily podcast on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, gang, DP here. Thank you for making Locked On Huskers your first watch and listen each and every single day. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, hanging out with us. I want to thank the folks from FanDuel Sportsbook again for making all of this happen for you. FanDuel.com slash locked on. All sorts of details and perks for, for as you get through. Major League Baseball has started, so there's plenty of action there. And, of course, uh, the NBA playoffs uh, underway with playing games and such. So, yeah, there's lots in play for you. FanDuel.com slash locked on for details. Uh, spring practice, Lincoln, Nebraska. And what – what my eyes were drawn to today were the big boys, the big boys. And over the course of this thing, I want to talk about, first we'll talk about the people that we know and the people who are getting the most, uh, the most energy. And then we'll talk about some of the names of, of young players and new players, folks that folks may not know and what's going on in that. And then uh, some of the discussion um, about Saturday as they go, a little bit uh, more physical. Uh, today was a you know a thud day, not a not a take them to the ground day. Uh, but you can watch the aggression and technique. And so to set all of this up, we want to talk about kind of what's happening with Coach Rayola and this group. Now, the returning players, the players that people know, uh, Noreen really is back. Uh, they've got him penciled in at what looks like getting first first reps with uh, at right guard and that just is where it is now that, that that that's no statement of the position being yours or uh that being where you end up but currently as they stand with the roster that they have uh and the available players that they have and that's a big deal that part about the available players uh, so as we talk about the Nori getting getting work at one guard position, Ethan Piper, who also got starts a year ago, getting uh, reps at the other guard position. Um, and I'll tell you this about those two players, that if the season started April 22nd instead of it being a, a spring game on April 22nd, um, I would have a high level of comfort in the competency of those two offensive linemen. Uh, to know, uh, you know, Nori, he sat out last year, uh, had an episode, uh, paid his dues on the thing, stayed a- with the team and around the team, uh, and, and, and just becoming smarter about what it takes to do well in the Big Ten and at the University of Nebraska, uh, getting smarter about how to take care of himself and take care of his body and uh, what's required of him being open. I know uh, from personal uh, relationship that he is a student of the game. He uh, sticks his nose in the book. He's n- not afraid to deep dive in, uh, um, on team video and finding out what's going on there. But he actually loves the game of football. He loves the f- physicality. And I, you know, I hate to say it, but not everybody loves it at that level. Well, Nori loves the physicality, and that's a big part of this. But what's happened – um, in watching uh, he and Ethan Piper work in tandem, there's a thing that happens where, where chemistry starts to play in. And Ethan Piper, while not the biggest offensive lineman and certainly not uh, massive or, or gigantic when it comes to Big Ten offensive linemen, because you know there's some guys even on this on the Huskers line that are just massive, massive human beings. Ethan Piper. I've said it before. He reminds me of, of, a, of a friend of mine, Jeff Bostic, who played for Washington back in the Hog days. A bit undersized, ex- extremely angry uh, and violent with his hands, and just tough as nails. Cerebral in that he fully understands what his responsibilities are. He understands the task at hand. He understands the mission, and he gets to work. And while he is not going to pop, you know, jump off the charts when it comes to you know, metrics, things that you can measure, or he's not, you know, he's not six foot four. He's not, you know, 295 pounds. He doesn't have 
the long arms, but what he does have is toughness, and what he has is football smarts. He has the IQ. So the two of them together are tough. They're really tough. They're violent with their hands, great core. Um, and, yeah, neither of them will win the underwear Olympics, but that's not what we want or not, not what we care about. What you're looking for is to, is, to, is to find some consistency and being able to protect quarterbacks, to create lanes for running backs, um, and to be kind of the bullies at the bar. They have to be the bouncers. They've got to keep uh, all of those nasty defenders away from whoever's playing quarterback for Nebraska. And a big part of the offseason is going to be trying to get our, our, our land, our eyes, and our heart on who's going to run this team from the quarterback position because we don't know and we may not know until right before opening day against Minnesota. We'll see more in the spring game and we'll get to see the first look of Jeff Sims uh, moving around and being being aggressive and physical in that space. And then we'll get to peek and see, you know, Casey Thompson will be there in IQ. I can't imagine that he'll be throwing the ball around much. But there's plenty of quarterbacks to look at. There's seven quarterbacks to look at. All the, way, all the way down to Woach. I mean, so they've got some folks. But that offensive line will tell us a big part of the responsibility of that offensive line is to dictate what the personality of the team is. And if they're able to protect the quarterback, a passing quarterback, it allows for Marcus Satterfield in this offense uh, to, to, to put in some really big plays and stretch verts and trying to get the ball downfield. But if not, then you get kind of reassigned to – uh, a scramble offense or a breakdown offense or a zone read offense where Jeff Sims may be the, the, the easier choice because if the line play is good, you can put anybody back there. If it's not so much, uh, Casey Thompson's coming off an injury, and I'm not sure that's who you want to have in if he's in recovery mode and the line's not playing at a high Big Ten level. There are two other names, Bryce Benhart and uh, Turner Corcoran, who look good. Ben Hart looks exceptional. I have to say that he's been the best, the most eye-popping offensive lineman uh, this season. Um, consistent. He looks steady. He looks balanced. He looks uh, looks in shape. He looks violent uh, in that every now and then he'll start to lean on, on somebody in a drill, and you'll see the difference. Uh, his leverage is better. His footwork is better than it was a year ago. Um now, I don't know what that tells you about it other than I'm looking forward to seeing Ben Hart live against live rounds on April 22nd. And I don't know what to expect. I won't tell you what to expect. I'm just telling you from my eyes view that he looks like he's in better shape. And he looks like he's got a better grasp on what's being asked of him. Uh, and then Turner Corker, and the same thing applies that the comfort and the familiarity, uh, the, the ability to communicate. Because if you're on either tackle and you can look inside with a guard that knows what you're looking at, what you're looking for, and what your first step is going to be, it makes you better. And all of these these four linemen have all played together. They all know each other. We'll go deeper into this offensive line because there's a couple of guys that, you know, quite frankly, um, we don't know what their health's going to be and we don't know uh, how they're going to be used. But we'll talk about the big man, Teddy Prohaska, when we come back to Lockdown High School. Hey, gang, thank you for making Lockdown Huskers your first watch and listen each day. Your second watch and listen should be, drum roll, Locked on the NFL Draft. Like they're, Look, the draft is big. And for them to put in the work that's required to let you know, and they've assigned, uh, they identified – uh, 64 or so players who have who, who are considered um, first and second round picks and being able to break them down from some of the locked on uh, programs that exist and from the locked on talent that exists. Well, if your player is 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 uh, in that space, and we'll talk uh, as we come up to 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 NFL camp, we will talk about locked on Huskers and we'll talk about uh, Huskers in the draft and where we think they'll go and project. As a matter of fact, we may even talk to a couple of them. So, but your, your first watch is locked on Huskers. Your second should be locked on NFL Draft uh, on YouTube or however else you consume 
your podcast. So if you're talking about four returning veterans to this offensive line, guys who've had starts in the Big Ten, guys who have starts at Nebraska, guys who are familiar uh, with Husker Nation and what's required, who are familiar with Anthony Grant and Gabe Irvin, who are familiar uh, with, with Casey Thompson, Logan Smothers, and Chubba Purdy, while they may not be familiar with Jeff Sims, um, it's in play. It's a thing. So to have four that know, well, there's there's an anchor that's missing. Uh, he's in a, currently practicing in a green shirt instead of the, uh, the, the the traditional ones, whites and reds that everybody else is wearing. So he's a little bit under watch. But Teddy Prohaska and having an injury uh, really dampens the enthusiasm that Husker fans have because if health healthy, when healthy, Teddy Prohaska projects as your starting left tackle. He projects as your starting left tackle, which has a domino effect on the rest of the offensive line. Because then you have to determine, well, of the guys who move out of that spot, and then you're trying to find another – uh, the opposite uh, tackle, and that could be either Ben Hart or Corcoran. But the also the uh, the other thing is that when you make that move and move one guard, you may have to move another. I mean, there could be some discussion over you know maybe Prohaska at left tackle and Ben Hart at right tackle and then maybe Corcoran or Ben Hart inside at one guard with Nori at the other or Piper at the other. If Prohaska is healthy, what it appears to me to be at practice is that he's moving well. Like he's able to put his foot in the ground, hold his balance. His reset is really good um, after first contact because there's a moment where after first contact you kind of jolt yourself and – a win it has to be acquired. So whoever gets their hand first, and Teddy with his length generally does that. But then can he then manipulate and maneuver his opponent by extending the arms and getting his core right and you know getting his hips in the right place and all those things. And with Teddy looks strong. He looks healthy. He looks like a left tackle in the Big Ten conference. Now, the health thing will, will come into play, and I don't know. I'm not sure what uh, what happens at spring game with Prohaska, whether he plays or not. But factor him, circle him as a factor in how the offensive line plays out. Um, there, there, there's, a, there's a bit of question uh, when it comes to what do you do with, with Mr. Scott from, from Arizona State? Like, in some reps, you would imagine that he is the starting center. So currently, if you had to say that there were five and a starter, if you were going to do the depth chart that Matt Rule says that there is none, uh, that it's uh, Ben Hart, Piper, Scott, uh, Nori, and Corcoran. If you put – if you, you factor in Prohaska, then that moves Ben Hart from left tackle inside – or to the other side to right tackle. And then if you bump that, then Turner Corcoran, who can play all three, you know, any, any position on the offensive line, comes in play. And it seems like it, then it'll come down to who's the best fit and the best chemistry for that group of five. But there, there, there are a couple of young men who are playing really well at practice. Um, Jacob Hood looks like a Big Ten offensive line. He, he looks like a Big Ten offensive line. Size, he moves like a Big Ten offensive lineman, uh, gets his feet in the ground, violent with the hands, can get chest to chest, to chest and bench press off to create some separation, uh, has the good footwork that can get uh, from, from guard to guard, uh, which is impressive to see. Uh, so he moves uh, laterally, and then he can get from point A to point B with a quickness and then be violent and under control at the same time when he gets there. Scott looks like he looks like the starting center, and he looks like somebody who has a real strong, solid grasp 
on what's being asked of him from play to play, from snap to snap, and from rep to rep. He never looks uncomfortable. I have yet to see him take a rep where there was that curiosity of what's going on around me. Uh, um, am I? Uh, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Oh, I'm not sure. There always seems to be an acceptance of the mission and knowledge of the mission, and he's prepared to put his foot in the ground and go beat somebody up. And he's super physical, which I can't overstate enough. <laughs> I just It's good to know that these offensive linemen seem to be practicing with some zest and some authority. They're not being submissive and, allow, and being reactive. They're being proactive and they're being violent. They're being aggressive. Uh, they're being purposeful. And that's pretty impressive because that, again, that hasn't always been the case. But there are folks who, when you watch them, Hood has the length. He's got the long arms and the rock solid lower half that looks like it can withhold uh, an avalanche of, of, of defenders. He and Jenkins, Jenkins may not have hood size, but he's got a bit of, of the Piper IQ and the Piper violence within short space. Listen, Nebraska has nine offensive linemen who are getting 10, who are getting high quality reps and they're getting something from it. We're not forgetting anybody, I promise. But we'll go to break. When we come back, we'll talk about Lutovsky. Because a fan favorite just off of name and nickname, but the, the reality is he has an opportunity to help this offensive line. We'll talk about that when we come back to Lockdown. Hey, gang, uh, again, thank you for making Lockdown Huskers your first watch and listen each and every single day. I want to thank the folks from FanDuel Sports Sportsbook, uh, the official sportsbook of the NBA. And as you head into the NBA playoffs, get yourself – uh, get the app downloaded for FanDuel Sportsbook. It's easy, it's safe, secure, uh, easy to read, easy to use, whether it's on your phone or your or, or your laptop. Uh, but go to FanDuel.com slash lockdown for more details. Um, we're talking about this offensive line, and it's a big question. Like, we I mean, look, Nebraska fans have been a little bit uh, beat down in their hopes for the offensive line, because this is a university and a program that has great, great history with offensive linemen. And when you're not getting that productivity and where some basic things weren't done well, this is year two for Coach Rayola here and his second year with several of these, of these offensive linemen. But he has to find depth. And again, if I rattle off nine names and say, okay, Look, if at any point you see any of them on the field, you should be able to be comfortable as a fan in seeing them out there, that some, something good could happen. And, you know, of the of the five who get, you know, first team reps or as a unit get reps together, and then the second four, well, you know, Henry Lutovsky is, is, is still a factor. And when you talk about the athletic arrogance, of just being comfortable and being violent. Like there, there's no there's no curiosity about it. He is an aggressive, on purpose, physical offensive lineman. And you know, I, I would when I see him, and quite frankly, when I see him practice, I think he's a center who who who's headed to the NFL. That's what I see. But then you see him at guard and you see him at tackle and you go, okay. That that's a win. Because his ability to play at several positions, and Matt Rule talks about it today, that he's got a lot of players and a lot of groups that have players who can play multiple positions, and that's a thing that they're going to have to deal with. So in an in 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 a, in a moment where you're really kind of in to to install things with your players, new players, new coaching staff, uh, new schemes, that the simplicity behind it and your ability to adapt and pick up those those skill sets and the code words that you're going to use, it's vital. It's it's really important for them to be able to read, to hear a call and know what was there and have Scott whisper over to whether it's Nori or Lutowski or, 
or Corcoran or whoever it is next to him use the same verbiage and receive the same understanding for what they're asking for. The physical aspect of it, Lutovsky's ready. He is ready. Just punching people in the chest and snatching hearts. Absolutely ready. Then it becomes the comfort and the athletic arrogance. And when, when they show up with young Lutovsky, then this is going to be special to watch. The offensive line has a really good shot at being good. Maybe even great. But just like most things in Nebraska football, we have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. I know we don't want to, and I know we got a lot, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff out there. But be patient, even past April 22nd. But what I can tell you, what I saw today, this was a group that was actually three units deep. They have some bodies. They have some people. And most importantly, they have some options. But they'll compete, and they'll end up with five. And as they heal up, it should be interesting in the offensive line room at the University of Nebraska. Thank you for making Locked on Huskers your first watch and listen each and every single day. Again, we thank the folks from Locked on NFL, NFL Draft. Jump on, get your details, make sure – uh, you find out what's going on in the upcoming draft about your favorite player and your favorite program. Again, we appreciate what you do. And for you hanging out with us, subscribe, like, share, do all of that. And then we'll close with the three words we love so much. Go Big Red. <laughs>